the effectiveness of the deacons in deterring violence was so great that Dr. Martin Luther King and Floyd McKissick of Corps hired the deacons to protect the marchers from Klan aggression in the 1966 March Against Fear. The very effect of armed resistance in the name of civil rights is what really cast a new enthusiasm into the civil rights movement at a critical time. When the right to bear arms is put in the proper perspective historically, then people will see that the African American community having guns to protect themselves, not from crooked cops and police brutality, but from the culture of drugs and gangs because of a war going on due to the narco economy. And so until we address why are these people armed, why are they shooting, we're not going to be able to create an oasis of redevelopment in the inner cities of America. Inner city violence is directly related to the black market for illegal drugs, gangs, and drug dealers' turf wars. Today's war on drugs, like alcohol prohibition in the 1920s, share many similarities. Back then, gangsters and bootleggers took to the streets to protect their territories. Homicide rates skyrocketed at the beginning of prohibition, then took a huge drop after its repeal. Homicide rates again spiked in the early 1970s when President Nixon declared America's war on drugs. More than 35 years later, homicide rates in America's inner cities fluctuate but continue to peak. We've got to stop the demonization of guns. We've got to encourage law-abiding citizens to arm themselves. And then we have to circulate that information throughout the high crime areas. Government published facts speak volumes on the effectiveness of armed citizens. According to the U.S. Bureau of Justice Statistics, 57% of polled felons agree. Criminals are more worried about meeting an armed victim than they are about running into the police. And according to the U.S. Department of Justice, the probability of serious injury to women during an attack is two and a half times greater when they are unarmed. If women were able to freely carry firearms, there would be less chance of, of somebody looking at them as a victim. There would be less crime committed against women because a criminal would, would have to question, is this woman armed? And according to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, 550 rapes and 1,100 murders are prevented every day just by showing a gun. We got to tell the other side of the story about the hundreds of thousands of times in America where guns are used to stop violence and to stop a crime from being committed. The police aren't there to protect us. They are there to enforce laws and to arrest criminals once they are criminals, once they have committed a crime. But they're not our personal bodyguards, so I have to do that for myself. No matter how many gun control laws they put into effect, no matter how much they try to restrict it, even if they make it illegal for anybody to own guns, there's going to be a black market. The community does not get safer when the criminals are told there's no guns available on the part of law-abiding citizens. People are going to have access to firearms, and the ones that are going to have them are going to be the criminals. That's like an open season for crime. It's just like drugs are illegal and it's a booming business. History has a habit of repeating itself. Now, as it was back then, politicians and community leaders wrongly claim less guns means less violence. Now, as it was back then, politicians and community leaders wrongly misguide the public in believing that the police and not the community can best provide protection, even though the Supreme Court has publicly stated that state and local governments do not have an obligation to protect citizens from criminal harm. Guns are a convenient target 
that disingenuous civil rights leaders and politicians hide behind because they don't want to address the real problem, which is why are all the black youth dropping out of high school and getting guns? Gun control advocate Sarah Brady, wife of James Brady, whose name is on the 1993 Brady Bill Violence Protection Act, purchased her own son a high-powered rifle. I think they're misguided and I think it's just, it's a hot issue. We can always get a bunch of politicians, well here's the mayor, here's the alderman, here's the state rep, here's the state, well here's the president of the Senate, here's, they'll always come out to a press conference where they can put on a certain tie and insinuate that they're there to protect the children. It resonates with voters, it's something that's unquestionable in terms of its merit, and it's something that's patently wrong in terms of the gun control issue because gun control does not protect the children. Fact is, a child up to the age of 14 is four times more likely to drown, four times more likely to die in a fire, and 13 times more likely to die in an auto collision than from a firearm accident. And that's a message that has to be driven home. What we've got to do is create a solidarity for gun owners that are across the political spectrum, across the racial spectrum. I think that it's high time that blacks, whites, all Americans of goodwill realize that the sacred right to self-defense is at risk in America during the next four years in an Obama administration with Eric Holder going in as Attorney General. Why? Not because they're bad people, but because their philosophy is such that drying up the availability of guns will create greater safety. So I think that what we're looking for is not to be found with gun control, but can only be found when citizens take it upon themselves to protect themselves and their property. For too long, community leaders, ministers, and politicians have failed to reject the gun control lies. For too long, African Americans have lost control of our neighborhoods. For too long, African Americans have been denied the right to keep and bear arms. For too long, African Americans have been victims of criminals, drug dealers, and dangerous gun control policy. For too long, African Americans have been on the wrong side of the gun. We have to remain vigilant. We have to challenge the Congress when they try to bring about these new gun control laws. And we have to educate the African American community and other communities in America, the racist roots of what gun control is really all about. I believe that productions like this video provide a valuable tool for average everyday Americans to get the message out to their neighbors, to the people in the community, to the people at their church, to the people at their schools, and to the elected officials that set policy in their areas. I think it's essential that this video is downloaded, copied, emailed, and in every children-oriented social service group that has a strong lobby in the U.S. Congress, I think that we should inundate all of these entities with copies of this video and let them respond to the merit of it based on the facts. And I think that then we can create a forum nationwide where we can keep the pressure on the public policy centers to ensure that the Second Amendment remains an institution for the United States.